So tonight I'm going to build, really quickly, a boardwalk keyboard. This is a keyboard I'm pretty excited about. It's ready here. Yeah, I'm excited about this keyboard because the layout is really interesting. It allows for an ortho mostly ortholinear layout, but with some traditional things like the space bar and the arrow cluster. So that's exciting. Definitely gonna gonna be a, a fun layout. I think I got enough switches here. I think I'm missing a couple, so I need to grab those real quick. But uh, first, let me add one thing. One window capture for the shell. see this right now. Hmm. Let's see. I'm supposed to use a different channel to say when there's... Hmm. Oh, other creators, here we go. Got it. lot of time so let's get started this is essentially what mkultra.click sent to me now you may have heard of mkultra.click lately because of his da -da 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 plate foams these are these are hot in the community right now these things really interesting whether you agree or not, the fact is that putting this piece of foam between your plate and your PCB changes the way your keyboard sounds. It's not like a night and day change, like you're not gonna, you know, have a fit when you hear it, but it, I think it sounds better. And it's, uh, depending on what kind of sound you want, if you want that more muffled sound, you can get it. This, this is a little step in that direction for you. So I think it's really cool. So he has graciously provided me this boardwalk kit to review along with a foam that matches the layout that I would like to build. And then the case that I'm going to use tonight for this build is right here. I'm sure you've heard of it. So the cool thing about the boardwalk is it fits in the standard 60% size case. So the case I'm going to use is a KBD Fans Tofu case. Just a beautiful case for how cheap they were. I think this was like $85. So I've already taken care of putting a little bit of foam where the case is deeper and a little bit of tape here just in case any electrical contacts might touch the case when the PCB flexes or the plate flexes. And then the other thing I've done is I've actually taken the, the middle standoff out. So this is what some people call the four post mod. So this is supposed to increase the flex of your of your PCB and your old keyboard. So let's take a look. What do we get with this boardwalk kit? First thing you get is this nice PCB here. 
What case was it? Oh, I can show you again if you like, just quickly. It is a KBD Fans Tofu case. The Tofu 60% tray mount case. I'm going to take off my wedding ring so it doesn't smack, scratch anything. Some really sharp corners here. Very kind of modern design, minimalistic kind of design. I think it's a beautiful case. The surface finish is really nice. If you if you look up close, it's just gorgeous, gorgeous surface finish. So I have been using this case for, of all things, a GK64 PCB, which I'm no longer happy with. So I'm going to try using it for something a little more adventurous in this uh, boardwalk. So here's the boardwalk. It actually goes this way. Here you can see this lower right hand flexibility that you have, this area where there's there's some different layouts supported. So back to the PCB. PCB has some cool features. USB type C connector. That's always great. Let's see, is it solidly soldered in place? Let's, let's take a look at the quality control here. It looks pretty solid. It looks like they used enough solder. It's not going to snap off. This runs on an at Mega 32U4 microcontroller like many keyboards these days. This also means that you can use QMK and I will. And another cool thing about this PCB is it's got all the diodes and resistors already in for you, ready to go. It does not support backlight, but it does support underglow. You see these RGB underglow LEDs? So if you have like an acrylic case, this would look really cool. I wish I had an acrylic tofu or something like that in some kind of acrylic 60% case. But for now, I'll just make do with what I have. So the boardwalk is mostly an ortho layout. You see orthogonal grid. But then you'll see over here some compatibility options for different, different uh, like the arrow clusters and having a more standard looking enter, like a 1.25 enter. So for me, this is going to make it a lot easier to transition to ortho as opposed to a full ortho layout because I'll still have my arrow clusters that I'm so used to having on my 65% keyboards. So this keyboard is like the best of both worlds. Like if you took an ortho and a 65 and kind of took the best of each. That's what I'm hoping for here and that's what it looks like. So we'll see if it pans out. So as part of the... These days there's a lot of interest about what kind of sound effect is created by these plate foams. MK Ultra Duck Click sells these pieces of foam that are cut to fit between your plate and your PCB. And so as a part of trying to help figure that out, I'm going to go ahead and build it without this foam and see how it sounds and then add the foam and see how it sounds. So then we'll have a true before and after. So. There's a lot to do. I better get started. First thing, I need to find three more switches. I think they're in a little baggy. Because I think the layout that I want requires something like 70 switches. So, here they are. Here's those extra three switches. I had them all waiting, ready for this build. So if you're curious what switches I'm using tonight, these are so much fun. These are really a fun switch. These are a Gateron Milky SMD, or sorry, Gateron Milky PCB mount switch, bottom. And then the top is a clear Gateron top from just some other Gateron switch that had a clear top. The stem is from a Halo, wait, the stem is from, is it Halo? Let me just double check. I don't want to give you wrong information here. 
I'll just pop one open and double check what this stem is. Okay, sorry. Uh, the stem is actually an Utemu Ice V2.1 stem, which means that it's shaped almost exactly like a cherry clear stem. So if you like Ergo Clears, this will be a really similar keyboard. Okay. Now on this keyboard there will be only one stabilizer for the space bar. I don't think any of the other keys require a stabilizer. So as usual, I like to start with stabilizers. My spring container. Gotta really move on this build. Don't have a lot of time. It's my here we go. Here's my stabs. Let's see. Hopefully, I'll have a 6.25 unit wire available for my Zeal stabs. I might not, though. Yeah, it looks like this short one. There we go. And then I need a couple of screws, of course. Screws are not in the stab. Okay. Hmm. I'll just grab a couple of loose screws. Oh, hey, Sophia Wolf, how's it going? You were in my last stream. This is going to be a very different build than the last one, just so you know. Don't expect it to be like the last one. The last one was crazy. Okay, the last one was very strange. This is going to be a much more mainstream build compared to the last one. We're not like hacking apart OEM cheap eBay keyboards and squirting talc in them and stuff like that. We're using <laughs> off-the-shelf components and and uh, parts that you can buy at keyboard vendors and. Uh, so we're building a boardwalk. We're using EPBT keycaps. We're using Gatoron middle key switches with clear tops and Utemu Sky tactile stems. We're using Zeal stabilizers. Bling bling. I'm gonna lube them real fast because they're not lubed yet. Now the current lube that I'm liking for stabs a tiny unusable thing. Oh yeah, boardwalk is, I think it's cool because it's big enough that you can actually fit all the normal keys you're used to on there. I'm actually really, like, I'm trying to be unbiased because this, for full disclosure, this board was given to me for free to review and build and to test the foam. And so I'm supposed to be objective. But I'm honestly pretty excited about this keyboard, even without really knowing how it's going to turn out. I'm already excited about it. Because I like ortho, but 40% is just rough for me. And I miss having my, you know, semicolon and, you know, I miss having all my normal keys, my enter. I miss, you know, having that tiny enter is kind of rough. And, you know. Yes, this thing very flexible with the bottom row. Let me show you. Let's see, is this the window? This is the layout I'm going to use right here. It's up on the screen now. I'm not going to use that key set. I wish, but I don't have that key set. That's a pretty cool looking key set. Red Sam, is it? I think. Yeah, I don't have that one. Another thing that I think is really cool about this build, this is only one stabilizer in this entire build as far as I can tell. So, that'll be super cool. And I think I might get affiliate status after this stream, by the way, if anybody's wondering. So that'd be cool. I think I, think I just needed to stream on one more different day if I wanted to get affiliate status. So that'd be nice. 
So I think there's only one place where you can do 6.25 face bar. Yep, there it is. Sweet. Yeah, that layout is something else. Like, I saw that, I was like, wow, someone's got a big brain. I thought of that. It's like, the next level layout right there. I know some, I know some hardcore ortho people be like, oh, it's not truly ortho. It's not good. It's not truly ortho. What are you doing? I don't care. I think it's. I think it's great. It's excellent. I'm super excited to use this keyboard at work because I've been using these switches. I've been using these switches at work. Like when I work from home, I've been using them to work in my hot swap keyboard just to make sure that the switches were good before I commit them to a build. And, uh, and, uh, man, I really like these switches. I don't know if they're going to sound as good in this build, but in the keyboard I was using them in, they sounded really cool. They had a really interesting musical kind of a sound to them. So, if I can just get these staying stabilizer screwed in, we'll be, we'll be, we'll be moving really fast here because I don't have a lot of time tonight. So we're going to try to move fast. So it looks like on the bottom row we got 1.25, 1.25, is that right? And then 1, and then on the right of the spice bar, 1, 1.25, and then the arrow cluster. Simple enough. But I'll probably have to cheat and get out, pull, you know, pull out some keycaps to help me. So I usually do. Let me line it all up. Then the second time around it'll be easier because I'll be able to look at which pads I already soldered to last time. Okay, let's see. So I have one complaint here I have to point out. Because of the nature of this, uh, the way the stabilizers are supported. Um, there's two different stabilizer locations right next to each other. And so this stabilizer hole is kind of, I guess it's okay. I just have to make sure to hold it, twist it so that it's on the right side when I screw it down. But, oh man, look at that. My, uh, my washer didn't stand. It like uh, bent and folded. Okay, I have a solution for cases like this. Don't worry. So instead of using a fiber washer that's flexible, when you have a Swiss cheese PCB like that, where you've, you're supporting a lot of different layouts, I use a washer that's solid on those mount points instead. So I think that'll solve that problem. I use a plastic, it's a nylon washer. So I think that'll solve the problem here. Instead of a fiber washer. And the reason I like to always use washers is because I don't. Hmm. Ooh, that would be a cool layout, what you're describing. I'll see if I can, okay? 1.25, 1, 1.25, yeah, that would be cool. Oh, but not the 7. I Wait, 7? I, I don't really like 7 U space bars, sorry. But... The 1.25, uh, 1, 1.25 might be cool if that's, if, uh, if the PCB supports it. Man, so I'm having some real trouble here. Okay, there we go. Getting this thing lined up. This is the price you pay for more compatibility on the PCB level. Okay, that looks good now. Let me do the other side. Actually, the other side's already fine because it's not a universal mount point like, like that side. So I think we're good. Whoops. 
Sorry, I hit the wrong button. By the way, it's a little, uh, let me turn off the auto, turn off the auto, uh, whatchamacallit, brightness, because that's annoying. There we go. That's a little dim though, isn't it? to see. Alright, let's get this party started. I'm excited. Oh, huh. I almost forgot something important. Little treatment on my stabilizers. Little greasing. Help them make sure that they don't rattle. Okay. So I'm going to pull up the, the layout I had in mind for reference. Make sure I don't make a mistake. Oh, interesting. I, wanted to, I want you guys to notice something. If you're interested in, in uh, if you're interested, take a look at this this uh, on the PCB. The switch next to the USB-C needs to be upside down, so we got to take that into consideration. It's kind of different, so I'll put that. I'll make sure to put that one upside down. It has the north-facing LED arrangement. Let's see any others. No, that's the only one. Yeah, it seems to be a common way of solving uh, the problem of uh, having like uh, not enough clearance, right? These are going to be arrows, so now they're going to be one use apart. That's easy. It's going to go one U, one U, one U, on those three. So that'll help hold things in place. One U, one U, one U. Looks good. this smaller this is annoying so you can see what I'm doing hmm is this plate is boat or is PCB's boat <laughs> oh well we'll fix it doesn't matter where my good solder okay we gotta really move here I don't have a lot of time Be like last night's stream where I wasted a ton of time. I guess I kind of mumbled. I say it's not going to be like last night's stream where I wasted a ton of time. I 
Is this cool for you guys or should I zoom in more when I'm soldering? Do you want to see up, up closer when I'm soldering or does it matter? You can let me know. LMK. Okay. Just for the sake of it, I'll go ahead and be up close. So these, rather than clamp them and try to put pressure on them while I'm soldering, I'm going to do a really lazy trick. I'm going to put a little bit of solder on, and then if I think it's not compressed enough, then I'm going to squeeze it and reheat the two at the same time. And if it wasn't, if the switch wasn't fully inserted, it would have popped the rest of the way into place at that point. Oh yeah, we got zoom, don't worry. It's no trouble. That's what I'm here for. You know, there's just not enough keyboard content out there, is there? So, I'll do what we can to create more. Alright. Let's see. Yep, problem solved. Now I'll go ahead and put the space bar in the middle. I love PCB mount. So much better to work with than plate mount. I'm going to do that little trick where I'm not sure if it was seated, so I'm going to reheat the joints, kind of reflow the joints and while I'm squeezing. There we go. It went tick, popped more into place. Let me move this back. I don't think you can see me very well. Is that better? Good enough. Okay. Got some Boeing here. Okay, it was hung up on the stabilizer housing a little bit, but it looks to be fine. It scraped off a little bit of plastic and now it's fine. Okay. I think we're good. I think we're good to start cooking. Did y'all hear about the uh, whole Viper drama? I think I have Viper building a keyboard. I honestly think people should uh, probably not worry so much about it. Oh, just one pin? Okay, so you like solder one pin in and then you do the squeeze and, and reflow. That's smart. As long as the one pin's enough to hold the tension. Yeah, that is easier. I'll try that next time. Thanks for the tip. So, uh, thanks for the tip, Tux Key. I'm learning as I go along. So let me just make sure I get a handle on the complicated part of this build, which is uh, the bottom row. So you were saying it might look cooler if you could do, oh, I can't do 1.25 and then 1U. That's not an option on this PCB. Darn. That's okay. I can do 1.25, 1.251. And spacebar. Let's just make sure spacebar is cool. Yeah, that's going to be a 1U right there. So apparently there's been a lot of drama going around. Some some guy who builds keyboards for money built a keyboard for a pro streamer. 
named uh, Tifu, and he charged him a lot of money, and some people didn't like that. Let's see. I think the number that kept getting thrown around was $700. $700 keyboard, $700 keyboard. I don't even know if it was really $700 or what. Okay, I think I want write alt to be, I would like write alt to be 1.25, not one. So let me see if it supports that. No, it doesn't, okay. So this key needs to be one U. Yeah, be one you here, next to the space bar. That's what I see in the picture too. So it's consistent. And then I think you can have a 1.25 next to that. So you got one. Yep, we're good. Sweet. Now what about the next row? Oh, he talked about Teha types? What did he say? I didn't see that. Now that I'd be curious about. One keyboard builder talking about another keyboard builder. Very interesting. I need to, I need to look closer at this layout. Okay, so that's just one you again. So I think these are my page up, page down. Once I get my layout the way I want it. Oh, this is going to be so cool. Okay, now we're back to the, I think, either 1. Point, I think 1.5, actually. I think most of these mods are 1.5. Most of these uh, side mods look like they're 1.5. And then it looks like we have a third one down. Looks like we have a 1. Point something. 1.5 here, maybe. Yeah, it's one of the 1.5s. Okay, that makes sense. Wait a second, or does it? There's gonna be a 1U right here. Just make sure that's. Yeah, that does make sense. It needs to come out. Go. Yeah, 1.5, great. Now down here, similarly, similarly we have a 1U, a 1U, and then there's gonna be a 1.5 in the middle, so it's gonna have to be centered. It's gonna have to be there. Right. Yep. Okily dokily. I think we're clear to keep moving. Let's get all these confusing key caps soldered in place before we move on. He was rude about Teha types. Well, that's disappointing, I guess, because we really should all be nice to each other. This hobby is not big enough to have feuds and stuff. I wish, I wish everyone could just get along, but, uh, you know, it's not like this is a huge hobby that needs to be cutthroat. Well, that's just my opinion. I'd like, I'd like to see us all kind of treat each other with respect, obviously. Try to try not to get too close to these LEDs so that I don't do any damage. Something I've noticed with the uh, RGB LEDs is they're fairly sensitive to heat. If I heat them up really bad when I'm soldering them, they just fail. They just stop working. So I try to be careful these days. See, like right there, I don't want to get too close to that. I 
already soldered. Here. 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 getting a little dirty. <laughs> I think this keyboard's gonna sound cool because the the weird switches that I put in it. <laughs> I have high hopes for this keyboard, seriously. That milky goodness. Milk, it does a keyboard good. That should be the new slogan. Somebody offered me the uh, money to build their keyboard, and I'm considering it. It's a little bit scary though, because I haven't done commissions before. And I would hate for something to be not to their liking, you know? I'd hate for them to be disappointed about, about anything in the build. But it seems like, since I like it and it's so fun, why wouldn't I build other people's keyboards for them? Even if I just charge a little bit, even if I just do it for cheap. You know, it seems like it's, if you're gonna do it anyway, and you're usually paying, usually it's costing you money to do this hobby. Why not do the hobby where it doesn't cost you anything or else, or you even earn just a little bit. I don't. I couldn't see myself trying to earn much money off of it because, um, well, I don't have the prestige of some builders, and I also I have a day job, and I don't really need this um, to be my main income. And I just, you know, I don't want to take away from what other people have going on. I don't want to disrupt other people's business. But if there's somebody who wants me to build their keyboard and pay me some fair price for my time it seems kind of like a no-brainer doesn't it as long as i think as long as i feel confident that i can do a good job which i think i can for most keyboards unless it's something really unusual i mean i tend to be good at even like repairing pcb shorts and problems with the pcb i think i go above and beyond what a lot of people do like in terms of hobbyists so I think I could do it I think I could safely go out on a limb and offer build services but it's you know it still makes me a little bit nervous but I think the odds of me encountering something in a keyboard build that I just can't do anything about probably slim if, if we're talking about like electronic, physical electronic issues, if we're talking about something like a problem with the surface finish, then no, I wouldn't know what to do with that. Like somebody gets a board that's got a bad anode job. 
I wouldn't know where to begin to get it re-anodized, for example. But I think with the electronics side, I think I'm pretty good. Feel pretty confident there. Not that I understand all of it, but that just enough to to do it on keyboards at least. Yeah, ultimately I'm a tinkerer at heart. I like to tinker and try things. And that's something I like about this hobby. There's a lot of room for trying new things. Or just customizing it. Just customizing your keyboard, making it your, your own way, the way you like it, not the way people tell you it should be. That's what's so fun about this hobby, I think. You don't have to have the same keyboard as everybody else. Yeah, I feel you there. Variety. I think variety is so great. Like, I totally don't want to diss people who, who buy, like, three of the same keyboard because they love it so much. That's something that I don't understand, but that's fine. It's not wrong. It's not wrong. That's just what they like. But I'm, I'm just saying, for me, I would never do that. I love having variety. I would never want to have two of the same keyboard. Or two really similar, unless there's something that really sets sets them apart from each other. So tray mount makes things kind of simple, doesn't it? Just gotta feed those screws into those holes, and I think this is a magnetic screwdriver, so should make short work of that. Seems to be the problem here. Hmm. Let me try my other screwdriver. That one doesn't work that well. It's magnetic, but it doesn't uh, have the best bite. I need to check something here. I'm not sure the threads are in good condition on this thing. On this case, because I just tried to screw one of these screws in and it wasn't cooperating. Just take a quick look at these threads here. They might have something in them or they might just need to be run through real quick. Maybe I was cross-threading it. Okay. Tofu, please. Could this be the wrong screw? It shouldn't be. It feels like it's cross-threading. if I have a tap this size to run through those threads. That would probably be ideal. 
Ah. Let's see here. I wasn't expecting a problem like this. Threads, threads are messed up. Let me see if it's the screw. Let's see if the other holes are working okay. That one's fine. Yeah, at some point the screw got cross-threaded and so now I'm trying to kind of rehabilitate the threads if possible. Just be a minute here. Wasn't expecting this little setback. Hope it doesn't delay me too much. Oh, that's not good. Ha! Stripped. Okay, so what I'm gonna do for now is, is I'm gonna build it without that screw. And it'll, I think it'll stay in place well enough. Just for the sound tests and such. I'll come back later. I just, I really don't want to spend more time on this. I have limited time to work on this tonight. So, I'll drill it out, use the easy outs later. But for tonight, what I'll do is I'll just build it without that screw. And no, no, it's it's not that I don't have an extra screw. It's that the the screw broke off. The threads were messed up, and the screw broke off in the in the threads. So I'm just gonna not screw that one down for now. And then I'll come back later with a tiny drill bit and try to drill that out fix it later so that it's not uh, taking up time on our stream unless you guys think that's like super interesting and it's something you want me to do on stream do you would you rather I try to fix it now or later you want me to try to fix the screw on stream I will if you guys would rather see that and then the rest of the build. You see here. So the first thing I want to try is to put a slot in. I'll take a quick. I'll take a quick stab at it. And if it's not working after a few minutes, then I'll move on. It's like 3, 30 a.m. Yeah. It's, it's okay though, I'm a night owl. Okay. Better system of organizing? Yeah, you're probably right. But... This is a small room. This is the room that I work in. It's our guest room. It's become the keyboard room. 
That was my workbench. And it's a small workbench, if you notice. It's probably smaller than most streamers have. But, you know, it's not all bad. Because everything's close. Everything's within reach. Even though it's small, I can reach everything. Okay. Let me turn down the game a little bit. Just turn down.
Stream is what well, streams offline. Is it? Can you guys hear me? Extractor has any luck. Problem is, the problem is, I'm not sure if I have a screw extractor that small. The smallest one I have might be too big. That's the thing. Oh boy. Yeah. Dang. I don't think I have a screw extractor small enough. I'll try this one. But, uh, I mean, I'll try it, but it's probably not going to work. We'll see. Oh well, you know, I'm, I don't want to spend a ton of time. I think what I'll do, I'll drill it out. I'll get a two millimeter tap later. I don't have a two millimeter tap on hand, but I'll just re-tap the hole. That'll fix it pretty good. I'll just re-tap re the threads after I've drilled it out to the right diameter. Not necessarily. I don't think I drilled into the threads. I, I tried to drill into just the screw, but it's possible. Maybe some of the threads will be okay. And if, if all else fails, what I'll do, if all else fails is I'll replace this with a standoff. Actually, how tall are these? Hey, let's, let's check something here. You know, it, it gives me a good idea. Three and a half millimeters. Three and a half millimeters.
sec. 3.5 millimeter. Which one use three millimeters? Two one seven seven. Two point eight three. Two point nine zero. That's close enough. Close enough for jazz. So, eight. It was three and a half millimeters tall, right? So the standoff stands three and a half millimeter, three and a half millimeters tall. Eight. So four and a half can be embedded. fit in there. I'm saying like anything's fixable right as long as it's not involving the outer finish as long as it's not the surface finish screwed up 4.23 we're almost there it needs to be four and a half the depth four and a half is what we want Got it. Now let's see. The new new replacement standoff is sitting a little high. I want to make sure I don't damage the threads. Yeah, this this is an example of how you can repair if something goes really wrong with your build. How you can fix it. Point six, we're almost there. I really don't want to mess up the threads though. This is a brass part, so it's not the most durable in the world. So I'll go ahead and thread a screw in there before I pound on it anymore. That's how we got in this mess in the first place, messing up threads, right?
I'm gonna go get my hammer if I have any other if this gives me any more trouble There we go, three and a half. Did it. Now just to keep, make sure that it doesn't migrate or anything, I'm gonna let some some very high quality super glue soak into the crevices between the standoff and the uh, face. Let's get back on track here. I don't live close enough to neighbors for them to hear. And I'm gonna put a little bit of uh, of this super glue InstaSet accelerator. Make sure the CA sets right away. Okay, enough nonsense, let's get back to it. Sorry for the sidetrack. Sorry for the big uh, diversion there. Wasted wasted a bunch of time on that, but but uh, it's kind of interesting. <laughs> Perfect. We have ourselves a new case standoff. Good as new. Wouldn't you know? Oh. Yeah, I bet you don't see a lot of streams where they do that. Probably not, not common. Thanks. It's all hidden inside the case. That's why I don't care if it looks perfect. I care if it works. But I learned something. Be careful with those screws. They strip easily. I should have been more careful in the first place. And notice that it was cross threading. And my other two screws. Yeah, seriously, who cares? If you can't see it. Maybe I'm just a redneck geared in. There's already a, there's already a redneck mech guy though. So I can't I can't be the redneck mech. It's already <laughs> Dixie. this is if you want to have the benefits the supposed benefits if you want to have the supposed benefits of an ortho board but you don't want to have less <clears throat> less space to where you don't have enough room for your, your keys that you're used to like semicolon and quote and enter all in the same row this keyboard squeezes down into the it fits into a 60% case that's what it's in now and yet 
and supports a lot if you consider it supports something that's easier to get used to if you're not used to ortho um, Like for one thing, it has an arrow cluster. If you're not used to ortho, though, that could be really nice. Now, the way this is supported, this layout is they have some of the keys come from orthodox or ergodox I think so I hope they'll be the right real profile and everything I ordered some ergodox keycaps with the hope that this would fix that so like this I'm hoping Hoping will be the right row profile to be my backspace. It's not though. I thought the whole point of this set. I guess this doesn't have R1. Oh well. So this is this set's gonna look kind of funky. It's not gonna look perfect. See, that's cool, right? And tab. <laughs> Not caps lock, though. Caps lock's gonna have to be a blank. Next one, also gonna have to be a blank. Wait a minute. Are not the same row profile. What's going on here? I think I'm off by a row. Okay, so that goes there. Maybe this one goes the third one down. Yeah. Yep. See, this isn't so bad. No, this is the EPBT key kit set. EPBT blue, and then some blanks that I got from AliExpress that are supposed to be ErgoDocs. So if you have an EPP, a regular EPBT set, the thing that you'll be missing is you'll need extra 1.5U mods. Even though that has the right legend, I think I'm going to skip it because it just looks dumb. That's supposed to be the highest row, but it doesn't look like it. Oh well. Not perfect, but I think it's an improvement over. I think the next best thing would have been just to run DSA on here or some other uniform profile. I just really didn't want to do that, you know. shoot I'm gonna have to have these mismatched keycaps dang that's gonna look bad dang do I have any no 
I guess I don't have the right size mods in this set. I have another blank set. Let me just see. I have another EPBT set. Let me see what's in there. real pain to write keycaps for, for this keyboard if you ask me. The biggest part of the challenge. Not sure if it's worth it. What's this? There's just no way I'm going to get all the colors to match, so I might as well just make it look dumb for now. But at least, you know, it can be easier for people to use. I have to use two different colors of mods. That's really disappointing, but... Well, I don't have a better option right now. Wow, that looks really bad. blanks there before I make it look that stupid. Let's see here, what profile is this? this okay. look but it's not hmm. profiles are all weird on these keycaps second from the bottom maybe Looks 
about right. My shift key. It's cracked real profile. Oh. <laughs> the, I forgot that the question mark exists. This thing works. <laughs> Key map's wrong, obviously. So
this is bigger than the screen. Fix that. Okay. That's interesting.
Oops. That's not the right layout. What happened here? I think this is what I have to do. I have to tell which layout to use. Not the default. I should have taken care of this earlier. Okay. I'll have this fixed in just a minute. So this is this is QMK that I'm fighting with right now.
just need a few minutes here to fix this right. I think on my system VI is just a link to Vim anyway. But, uh, mm. uh, one second here. Keyboard layout. Okay. Okay, let's try this.
Oh, thank God. That's not right. What the? Interesting. <sighs> Escape one. So I might have made a mistake. In my rush. Let's see here. Let me check something. They said there's a couple places where the standoffs could short on the case. I mean, the standoffs could short on the switch pins. So, I might have missed to trim those in my rush. So let me just check if I did that. Let me just check if, uh, if I need to do that. If I need to do go back and do it now.
I'm just turning on my the noise you hear is I'm turning on my my desoldering gun in case I need to desolder a switch as part of this modification. Could be, could happen. We'll see. So let's just lift this out of here and see. see what's it? What's the story here? Neither of these look like a problem. That pin. Hmm. Doubtful. I mean, maybe. I don't think so. Just to test if it has anything to do with the problems I'm having. I'll just plug it in. There's anything I might have missed. Well, guys, this is really embarrassing. The thing that I missed is I didn't solder some of the switches on the top row. That's why they're not working. Amazing, huh? Dumb, I know. Well, you know what they say if you rush too much, you make mistakes. I should have taken my time a little bit. Anyway, this one has a problem. Switch. All right, stress.
Let's see, one screw. Where's the rest? Let's see, it's screw two, three. Fourth one. It's not going to work for me. programming the layout the way I want it.
Nope, that's not what I want. Somebody's weird. <laughs> Somebody's got a weird layout here. Jesus. Okay. Non non alien layout. Sweet. Oops. That to be LTR. Okay, I think I've got the layout pretty much the way I want it. Okay, time to see, how does this thing sound? How does this thing sound in the tofu case? How does the boardwalk sound? In the tofu case? That is the question. In my mind now. Well, that's all put together.
Ooh, I'm not used to ortho. This is gonna be interesting. I'm trying to type on this thing. <laughs> I haven't used my ortho recently. Pretty bad. Pretty slow. Let's see here. Let's try again. Everything is straight down. Well, I'm getting more used to it, so I think I'll do one last typing test where I won't, I think I won't care about the errors, and this is just for the sake of sound comparison, so it doesn't matter how accurate I'm being, this is just to compare the sound. And I think I'll use typings. because this stupid type racer site has a ton of ads on it.
Okay. Let's do another one for the sake of the sound comparison. Let the website will load. Okay. Cool. That time we got a hundred words per minute. That is pretty cool. I'm getting better. Check it out and see. I did a lot better this time. Hundred words per minute. So it's not that hard to get used to ortho. Maybe not as hard as you might think. And I think you know what's, what's next. CD is demanding of me now. Is anyone still watching? The stream got longer than I expected. Everything takes longer than I expect. I should remember that. Nothing's is typically nothing's as easy as you think it's gonna be when you go into it with a job like this. for an upgrade, we hope, we hope it's an upgrade, it's part of what I'm here to find out. Missing screw. Just check something here.
What's holding this switch in place? It's not solder. Oh, I think the little tab broke off. Okay. That's fine. Just have to kind of use more force, I guess. And the switches are like that.
<laughs> hmm. These switches here fall out really easily. I'll probably just have to put these in, these four in later. All right, time to install the foam. Look at that. How easy. How easy is that, right? This layout's not exactly right for what I was doing. So I'll just trim it with a razor blade right here. Cause I use a 6.25U spacebar. I think he was, I think this phone that he sent me, I think I he thought I was gonna use a 7U or something. But he, as you can see, he made it easy to trim. scissors go. Get some little scissors. On. Little, little scissors. Oh, well, razor blade it is. Yep, I'm putting that foam in now. See how it sounds. little before and after with the foam.
boardwalk before and after foam. I'll, I'll edit it later to make it obvious. Okay. Is that it? Oh, space bar. I suppose I wasn't expecting me to use 6.25U space bar. So I'll just choppy choppy it. To get a boardwalk or a or the foam. Which one are you tempted to get? The boardwalk's pretty cool, I think. And I, I like the foam too. Obviously, I like it. I've used it in a couple builds now. Okay. Yeah, boardwalk's pretty cool. Alright. Building this bad boy up. Back together. Whoops. Okay, that doesn't go there. I don't know what I was thinking. Yeah, I like how it works with standard 60% cases. That's what I think is really cool about it. Among other things, I mean, that's one thing I think is really cool about it. Hmm. Well, I don't think this is MK Ultra's fault because I don't think he knew I was going to use the 6.25U spacebar. But uh, this piece of foam right here is in the way. Can't be there for this for the stabilizer, spacebar stabilizer. Thing over here, the other side. Let me just make sure the wire is not interfered with. Nope, the wire is fine. Okay, proceed. Got these in the right place. It goes. Okay, here's the space bar. Goes like that. Wait, that doesn't look right. Space bar. This guy. This guy. Yeah, this this guy's in the wrong place. He's just good over a bit. Okay, let's sort the bottom row out first. These are. These are uh, Frankens which I made. The bottom housing is Gadron Milky. The stem is from Halo True. Spring is a Sprit 63.5 slow curve. Um, and the top is a Gadron clear top. hybrid that I like. Switch hybrid that I enjoy. <sighs> I'm 
So this is the second time I've installed the foam. Yeah, the stems are Halo, Halo True stems. If that's, if you were asking about that, I think you were. So this is the second time I've installed this MPK Ultra Foam and it's just like last time there's a little bit of a challenge to get the foam compressed enough between the plate and the PCB kind of some of the switches I gotta kind of squeeze squeeze them and solder them in while I'm squeezing to get them in there nice and tight Oh, well, for what it's worth, I sure like the 63.5 slow curve springs, but uh, they had a 68 gram slow curve too, if you're interested in, this, in the whole slow curve thing. And if you, you know, if you like 68 grams, they had, they had 68 gram version of it, with a slow curve, if you're interested. Okay, bottom row is in. second. I think I lifted a pad here. Yeah. The trace actually. Let's see if I can fix it. Just that Sprit has a 68 gram version of their slow curved. They have a 68 gram slow curve spring since you like 68 gram. I don't know if you've tried this slow curve before. I think they're nice.
Make sure all the switches are seated all the way in. Especially important with this phone. I mean, it's always important to do that, I guess, but. If I had to make one criticism about this PCB, um, it would be a lot of the PCBs nowadays have kind of a more premium switch hole that's uh, more durable f for desoldering. Like it has the kind of thick jacket that goes through the PCB to the other side. And uh, this, this PCB is kind of the more like the switch holes are kind of the cheaper style so I actually lifted a trace on the top side of the PCB because I uh, my desoldering gun there was some solder on the upper side of the switch I must have put too much solder on that switch and some of it leaked down to the top side of the PCB so when I removed the switches I pulled a trace off now granted that's my fault but at the same time it wouldn't have happened on some of the some of the more durable PCBs I have because they would have had that uh, that stronger kind of sleeve that goes from the bottom of the PCB to the top of the PCB where the switch hole is. Just one piece of feedback. Since I'm supposed to be reviewing this keyboard, it's not going to be all positive feedback. It's only fair to point out anything that I think could be a weakness. So functionally I think it's really I think it's a really cool PCB in terms of the features that it offers and everything. I just would like to see from a an enthusiast perspective it would be helpful to have those more rugged switch holes because enthusiasts do like to build and rebuild and desolder and all that good stuff. So I guess depending on who it's marketed to, it might make sense to go with a more rugged switch hole design. Because the ones that I'm talking about, they have the jacket is like bigger, like a thicker in diameter. So it's less likely for the solder to seep out to the point where it's going to pull a trace off. But if you just be careful not to put too much solder on your switches, you pro I probably wouldn't have had that problem in the first place. I probably put too much solder on that switch, that's probably why it happened. <laughs> oh, it was beyond saving. I'm going to fix this. Whatever I damage I did, I'll fix it. As soon as I'm done here, I'll quickly I'll do a jumper wire.
I'll fix it on the underside. The underside, even though the damage is on the top side, I'll fix it on the bottom side. Because it's easier. Alright, I spoke too soon about this stabilizer situation being okay with this foam. So, this particular foam was not designed, I guess this piece of foam here wasn't designed for the 6.25U stabilizers and it's pushing on the, f pushing on the stabilizer enough to cause problems. So, because I don't want to be here all night, I'm going to see if I can solve it just by trimming the foam with a razor blade, trimming the offending pieces. I think it's just these little cross pieces, most likely. Yeah, those hand solder suckers are rough, aren't they? I couldn't, I couldn't function with those. I should have noticed this problem with the foam. I'm just, it's late, I'm tired, I'm in a hurry. But, but it's solvable. I mean, everything is solvable, pretty much. Keyboard build. There, I think we're back in business. See something real quick. Yeah. My EPBT space bar is nice and warped, by the way, if you didn't notice. <laughs> One of these days, I need to heat it up with the, with the dryer or something and fix it. I know sometimes you can bend them, straighten them. Yeah. <laughs> hey, who knows? Maybe I'll maybe I'll be converted someday. Come back and remove this big space bar and put just put one new keys. I mean, I'm sure it's more efficient to use that space for more keys. You can I can put at least six more switches down. I could have at least six more keys down there. I mean, f five more because space bar is one. Let's quickly see which key I messed up when I pulled the trace off and quickly fix it and get that typing test and then I'll be done. Thanks for tuning in, anyone who's still here. I guess my streams keep dragging out longer than I expect them to. I'm just not as fast as I thought I was. I try, but...
I think what I'm doing is pretty ambitious to build it sort of like twice. Once with without foam and once with. <laughs> okay, let's pull up the keyboard tester. See which key it, I messed up. It's M. It's M. Okay. Okay, so this is kind of an interesting thing you might, if, if you haven't done this before, you might find interesting. Nope, I'm in Arizona. So, almost like West Coast. It's early, early. It's 5.47. Pretty early. Okay, so I can see. So first of all, did I solder this enough? I think so. So what I see, the rightmost pin appears to go down to the diode which is probably used for the rows. So the leftmost pin is probably used for the columns. So probably what I need to do to fix this problem is when I pull this switch off, the trace on the top side was connecting this, this pad here to the ones above and below it. So since I'm not using the one below, I won't, actually, I don't know how everything's routed, so I think I will go ahead and connect it in both places. So I'll just connect a jumper wire. So this is magnet wire, and it has a, it has a, a, a um, insulation on it that melts if you get it hot enough. It melts away. So what I'm going to do is tin the tip of it. to get it really hot to burn off the insulation. Actually, I don't think my iron's turned up hot enough. So, if the iron's not hot enough, it won't melt. Okay. There, so that's tinned a bit. There, now I'll put that to going to the row below. This is probably don't need to do this part. Make a 
probably skip this connection, but just to be safe. I'll go ahead and connect it here, just in case. And we'll take the other side. Let me see, let me avoid, avoid everything as much as I can. I'll go ahead and attach that guy here to this switch. <sighs> now I'll heat this bad boy up enough to burn off some of that stuff. Insulation stuff. I gotta get my iron extra, extra hot for that. I've noticed. Hmm, actually, it might not work in this location because <laughs> the wire has too much, probably too much mass to cool it off. We'll see. Yeah, let me try it. Ah, oh, there we go. It's it's happening. Melted. Good. Melted off. Then I'll just connect him here. Let me just confirm it works. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, that's right. Yep, yeah, you've used it before. <laughs> Obviously, you've used it before. I gotta get up at least 400C. Alright, problem solved. Even better if I hadn't have broken it in the first place, but oh well. <laughs> I'm almost. Yeah. It's kind of good to show that on stream though, because not everyone knows how to do that. So, could be that. It could be possible that someone watches the stream and, and gets a gets a hint how to do it. Maybe. makes the foam makes it a tight fit okay the foam fits snugly into the case there oh that's kind of nice snug fit seems like a good thing
Great. Great, great, great. So this will be cool. Some more results to see. See if this stuff really does anything, right? And what, what it does. This foam stuff. Let me just wait for my computer fan to, to slow down a bit. And, uh, I think I have the camera up higher. I don't think it'll affect the acoustics because the microphone isn't on my camera. I have a separate microphone, but just for consistency. I'm going to do one without the results so that I can go faster and make more mistakes. Because that's what I did for the before test. I definitely think it sounds good. Uh, without being able to remember exactly how it sounded before, I think it sounds better. Hmm. Yeah, I think it sounds better. I think it sounds great. Well, thanks for watching once again. I gotta get going. It's early in the morning, but I uh, hope it was fun. And uh, hopefully we'll catch you next time. Thanks for keeping me company and have a great day.